Hello, everyone. I am IC Quag, and it is an honor to be doing devotions with you guys. The scripture passage I chose for today comes from Job 23, 11, which reads, My foot has held fast to his steps. I have kept his way and have not turned aside. Would you please join in prayer with me? Dear God, thank you for giving us another day to walk with you, to open our hearts and live in communion with you. We give thanks to your grace and love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I chose this passage, first of all, not because it testifies to my faith and my character. Far from it. I am fully aware that my feet have wandered away countless times, and I have turned away from God to every direction possible, left, right, up, down, literally every direction for almost all of my life. Well, I chose this passage because ever since I came to the States, this passage has been the verse that I kept, kept, kept coming back. I kept coming back to this verse because of an image that was sparked in my mind as I reflected on the things I've been through for the past six months. I left Korea, south, not north, and arrived in North Carolina on the 7th of August last year. Stayed at a friend of a friend's place in Fuqua Varina and planned to find a place close enough from school and buy a car before the semester begins. Well, arriving at my friend's place was no problem, but everything else soon became issues. About two weeks in, after I set up my bank account, I went to a dealer shop, found a nice car, sweet deal. Dealer tells me to put in deposits, so I said, so I did. And the next day I come back and the dealer says, so sorry, but I forgot someone else put a deposit before you. So I sold the car. Would you be interested in buying another instead? Unbelievable, right? Well, me and my host, of course, told him to screw you and went to find a place to rent. And I found a place to move in on the 1st of September. I put in my application, passed all the screening. And on the 31st, I called them again to sign the contract. And they tell me I need to move in on the 10th. But luckily for them, the rent was quite cheap for a furnished apartment. So me and my host decided that we would wait until the 10th with him driving me back and forth from Fuquay Farina to Duke for 10 days. I don't know if you know the distance between that. That's an hour long drive. So for 10 days, we'd wake up at 6 a.m., get on the road by 6.30, arrive at Duke by 7.30. Then he goes to work and I go to my classes, which on most days ended at 6 p.m. So we drive back, arrive at home at 7 p.m. and do the whole thing all over again. Now the day of move-in came, we go to the apartment, both of us excited that we wouldn't have to do this anymore. We arrive, my friend leaves, wishing me best of luck. I go into the apartment and voila, the apartment is empty. Turns out they never said, or so they claim that the room was going to be furnished. I still remember that day as I sat down on the floor of my empty apartment with all my bags in pitch darkness, literally feeling the darkness surrounding me. I couldn't understand why all the other international students were stepping on down just fine, whereas I made all the right move but got continuously screwed. Every step of the way, I made the right move, but I just couldn't reach where I wanted to be. It almost felt like America wanted to spit me out like some filthy friend that got stuck in its throat. But then one of the guys I met here in divinity school messaged me because he knew I was moving in that day. But he said, if something ever goes wrong, please don't hesitate to call. So I called him, he came to pick me up and we moved all my stuff to his apartment, which is far cheaper for a far better, larger apartment. And I ended up becoming his roommate, paying way less rent, taking way less time to come to the school, and also making really cool friends. Well, that's a wonderful story. Um, but how does that tie to the passage? Like I said, it isn't like I was putting all my faith in Jesus through all of that mess. I was kind of, but not really. But as I reflected on the passage, the image I got was of a journey on a pitch dark road 
where you can't see anything else other than the footprints of someone walking before you. And the only thing you can do is just follow that footstep, footprints step by step. And maybe it was God's way of teaching you, even though I, my foot could not help fast to his steps, that that's exactly how it is or it is going to be for me to follow Jesus. I think when we say we as Christians follow the path that Jesus took, in our mind, the picture that we have is one where we can see Jesus in front of us on the road and where we can see he is headed, where the destination is. All the picture is clear, right? And that's what I thought how it's going to be as I moved to the States because in my mind, I came to where God told me to go, right? And I think that's all good. If that is what God shows you, indeed, you know, the whole picture of where you are and where you're headed. But at least for me, and perhaps to some of you who are listening to this, what it seems like God was telling me is that I need just I need to just trust in God with all my heart and lean not on my own understanding. And instead of looking for or even planning the whole picture of my journey, just look down, be humble and follow the footprints laid before me step by step. Even when it seems like a crooked path, just follow the steps. So every day when I get up, I meditate on this passage because even now, I don't know where I'm headed. I don't have a specific plan of what I'm going to do after Master of Divinity or even what I'm supposed to do or even what I want to do for that matter. But I meditate on this passage and I just try to put my trust in Jesus believing that he has the whole picture and what I need to do, what I need to do is to live a day at a time, to walk step by step. So if anyone feels the same way that I did or is facing a challenge at this course of one's life, I invite you to also meditate on this verse. The verse again reads, my foot has held fast to his steps. I have kept his way and have not turned aside. May God be with you.